Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. This is part two of lesson 5.2. Just one objective, we're going to verify some more trig identities. So in this first example, we're gonna verify the identity secant squared of x minus one times sine squared of x minus one is equal to negative sine squared of x. And here's one thing I like to do, or one thing that might be helpful for you as we're going through verifying these identities. Since we can't cross this equal sign, one thing that might be helpful is to just draw yourself a vertical line there kind of to remind you that we're not allowed to cross between these sides. Now I'm gonna start looking at some of our identities. I'm focusing on this secant squared of x minus one on the left-hand side. If we look at our Pythagorean identities, we could replace that with a tangent squared of x. Then we've got tangent squared of x times a sine squared of x minus one. Now if we look at this sine squared of x minus one, that's really close to one of our Pythagorean identities, but some of the signs are wrong. Okay, here we have a positive sign and a negative one, but if we wanna use our Pythagorean identity, it, they would have to be the opposite. It would have to be a negative sign and a positive one. So in order to get that to happen, what I'm gonna do is factor a negative one out of there. If I take this negative one out of something that's positive, it becomes a negative sine squared of x. And if I take a negative one out of this negative one, it becomes a plus one. Then we can use a Pythagorean identity to replace this stuff with the cosine squared of x. And I'm gonna take this negative one times our tangent right away, so we have negative tangent squared of x. The right hand side is negative sine squared of x. So I'm gonna copy that down just to remind ourselves what it is. If we look at this tangent, we know that tangents are sines over cosines, but this is a tangent squared. So we're gonna make that sine squared over cosine squared. And then we're still multiplying by this cosine squared. Then what we can do is we can cancel out these cosines. So we have negative sine squared of x on the left-hand side equals negative sine squared of x on the right-hand side. Those two sides match up, so we're all done with this one. Here's our next example. We've got tangent of x plus cotangent of x equals the secant of x times the cosecant of x. And just like I did on the last one, I'm gonna draw this vertical line down our equal sign just to remind ourselves that we can't cross over that thing. I think I'm gonna start working on the left-hand side with these tangents and cotangents. We know that the tangent of x is the same as the sine over the cosine. And as far as our cotangent, well, that's just the opposite. So this one is gonna be cosine of x over the sine of x. Now, in order to add these fractions together, we're gonna to need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply each fraction by the other fraction's denominator. So over here on the left, I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by the sine of x. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by the cosine of x. So taking care of that multiplication, sine times sine is sine squared of x. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. We've got addition happening between there, and then we've got this common denominator now of sine of x times cosine of x. If we look on top, that's one of our Pythagorean identities, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is one over sine of x times cosine of x. And now earlier we put these fractions together, but I'm actually gonna split this apart now. Since there's multiplication happening on bottom, we can split that up into two separate fractions with multiplication between them. So we've got sine of x on the bottom of one, cosine of x on the bottom of the other, and we've got one on top of each one of those. One over the sine is the same as the cosecant of x. One over the cosine is the same as the secant of x. Even though the order is reversed on these things, cosecant of x times the secant of x is the same thing as secant of x times cosecant of x. So we're done with this one. In example three, we've got cosecant of x minus the sine of x, and we're gonna show that's the same as the cosine of x times a cotangent of x. So line running down the middle again. Uh, now on the left-hand side, I see a cosecant and I see a sine. I wanna get those to be the same trig function. So I'm gonna take this secant and I'm gonna make it one over the sine of x minus this sine of x. Now, if we look at this sine of x as a fraction, it's over one, we're subtracting fractions, so let's go ahead and get common denominators. So I think what we should do is, let's take this sine and multiply it on this right-hand fraction, on top and on bottom. So then we've got one over the sine of x minus 
sine squared of x over the sine of x. And now that we have common denominators, let's put our fractions together. So 1 minus sine squared of x over sine of x. On top, Pythagorean identity, 1 minus the sine squared of x is the cosine squared of x over the sine of x. And since there's a cosine squared, it's really like having two cosines. So I'm just going to write out both of them, cosine times another cosine all over the sine of x. And now here's what we can do. I'm just going to group some of these things. We've got this cosine over the sine. Well, we know that cosine over the sine is the same as the cotangent of x. And I guess we've still got this extra cosine of x hanging out in front. And that matches up with our right-hand side. So we're all done with this one. Here's example number four. We've got the secant of y plus the tangent of y. And we're going to show that's the same as the cosine of y over 1 minus the sine of y. So again, drawing my line running down the middle to separate our pieces. I'm going to work on the left-hand side. And I'm going to use a reciprocal identity with this secant to make it 1 over the cosine of y. As far as our tangent, I'm going to use the quotient identity that says that's the same as the sine of y over the cosine of y. Now our fractions already have common denominators, so let's go ahead and put them together. So we've got 1 plus the sine of y over the cosine of y. Now if we look at the right hand side, eventually we're going to need a cosine on top, so I'm going to do a little bit of multiplication. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the cosine of y. But I'm going to wait on distributing out the top. I'm just going to leave it as the cosine of y times 1 plus the sine of y. On bottom, we can multiply those together. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared of y. If we use one of our Pythagorean identities with the denominator, we end up with the cosine of y times 1 plus the sine of y all over. Cosine squared of y is the same as 1 minus the sine squared of y. And then we might notice the denominator is a difference of perfect squares. So we can do a little factoring there. So we got cosine of y times 1 plus the sine of y. If we factor out that difference of perfect squares on the bottom, we've got 1 plus the sine of y and 1 minus the sine of y. Now if we look, we've got 1 plus the sine of y on top and on bottom, so those things cancel out. So we're left with cosine of y over 1 minus the sine of y. And that matches up with what we were trying to find, cosine of y over 1 minus the sine of y. So we're all done with that one. Last example, we've got cotangent squared of theta over 1 plus the cosecant of theta. And we're going to show that's equal to 1 minus the sine of theta over the sine of theta. So drawing my line down the middle, I'm going to work on the left-hand side. Pythagorean identity on top, cotangent squared is the same as cosecant squared of theta minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant of theta. I'm going to do some difference of perfect squares factoring on top. So we have cosecant of theta plus 1 times cosecant of theta minus 1. And then on bottom, we've got 1 plus cosecant of theta. Now if we look, cosecant plus 1 over 1 plus cosecant, those are essentially the same. So those are just going to cancel each other out. So now we've got a cosecant of theta minus 1 over, I guess there'd just be a 1 on bottom. Now it says over here that we're supposed to end up with a sine on the bottom of our fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the sine of theta. If we distribute on top, sine times cosecant is sine of theta times the cosecant of theta. Sine times negative 1 is minus sine of theta. And on bottom, we end up with just the sine of theta. Now if we look at this, cosecant is the same as 1 over the sine. So if we take sine, times 1 over the sine. Well, that just gives us 1 minus the sine of theta on top. And on bottom, we've got the sine of theta. And that matches up with what we were looking for. So we're all done with this one. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.